94.3 The Dude is very grateful to our men and women in uniform. We're proud to recognize local members of our military by turning the spotlight on them right now in our Soldier Salute. I'm your host, Sergeant First Class Retired Don Sorensen, and on today's Soldier Salute, we're speaking with United States Army Specialist Ariana Jones. Ariana, tell me about yourself. I am 21 years old. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. I went to high school, John Marshall Community High School. I was kind of into a lot of trouble, so I found ROTC to keep me out. That was my first escape. And then I joined dance. I was in ROTC for three years. During that time, I really still didn't make my mind up that I was going to come into the military. But then I started thinking about going to college. I want to go to college to be an anesthesiologist. And I knew I didn't have the guts yet or the money. So I started looking into the Army. Recruiters were coming to my school, talking to me about it. It kind of fed me some other stuff, but they got me. So I went to basic training here at Fort Jackson, South Carolina in 2015. Then I went to AIT, which was also here. My first duty station was Seoul, South Korea, the nightlife, which was lit. And then after Korea, I came back here to Fort Jackson. Ariana, I kind of checked out about my senior year and it came down to where I felt like the military was my best or only option. What made you decide to go that route? So when I was growing up, I really wasn't very privileged. Another reason why I joined was so I can be more independent, have money on my own. When I was in high school, I was a little bit of a troublemaker only because I have I have two this mentally disabled brothers. And when we were growing up in school, people used to bully them. And I always wanted to be, you know, the hero, come to their rescue. People didn't know that I was their sister, but the moment they found out, it was like, okay, so what now? So I just used to just take that on. It was just in a lot of mess. And my best friend was in ROTC and the first sergeant was like, why don't you have your best friend come talk to me? Talk to the first sergeant. He was like, I feel like this would be a good fit for you. And I kind of was like, no, I don't want to do this. Like, I'm about to put this pickle suit on. Nobody wants to wear that. But he got me into it anyway. I actually liked it. I learned, like, a lot of stuff that people were learning in basic training, like the phonetic alphabet and marching, you know, drilling ceremony. I really liked it. And he just, he knew that I had, like, a lot of talent. And he told me that he knew I was going to come into the military. But I still didn't believe him. Like, this old man, what does he know? Ariana, I was probably one of the few guys that grew up loving to dance. And you mentioned that you had done some dance in high school. What was your dance experience? My dance experience was major at dancing. It's not pom-pom girls. It's not cheerleading. It's the girls in the cute uniforms that be with the band, the white boots. But we were, we were cute. I did it for three years. I was captain with my best friend, so that made it even more fun. Other dancing, I didn't really do much. I did gymnastics and cheerleading, but cheerleading was like too stiff, so I had to drop that. But yeah, I'd love to do other dancing. I'm not really good at it, but I would love to go to classes and stuff to learn. The dance and help with drill and ceremony. So with drill and ceremony, I also did unarmed drill team when I was in ROTC. It helped with remembering cadences so I can keep up with counts and everything. I had rhythm with everything. It was easy for me to teach other people and just made me more comfortable. I was doing both. I don't know, I feel like I was being my best me. Ariana, like myself and so many soldiers that I've met throughout my life's journey, college was something that we wanted to do, but really just was out of reach for us. You wanted to be an anesthesiologist and just talking to you, I think that's still a goal. Tell me how you're going to get there. So with anesthesiology, it takes eight to 12 years to earn a degree. It can be long whether you're a civilian or it can be long whether you're in the military. I know that the military is a stepping stone for me. It'll provide me with financial aid and FAFSA and NCOs that have patience with me, people that I can study with to help me get there. When I was coming in, I wanted a medical job, but my ASVAB score, which is the test that you take to come into the military, it wasn't high enough. My recruiter offered me another chance to take it, but at that point I was just trying to leave my hometown, so I just took the quickest date I could to ship off to basic training. But now that I'm in, I've been 42 for three years, and I'm going to reclass so that I can get to where I need to be as an anesthesiologist. 
It's nothing wrong with human resource, but medical is my dream job. Ariana, you're only 21. You've already been to Korea. Tell me about that experience. When I was in AIT or Advanced Individual Training, when I got the news that I was going to Korea, I was ecstatic. I've never been outside of my hometown before, never traveled anywhere else, never less outside of the country. So that was just big for me. Everybody else was nervous and scared, crying, but not me. I was happy. The only thing I was scared of was the plane ride, which was like 16 hours long. When I got there, I met a lot of new people, obviously people from different places of the world in different countries. That's where I met some of my really, really good friends. I tried all the food. I am not scared to try anything. Their food was amazing. They know how to dress. I would definitely let them dress me. Their, their casual attire is like what we, what we think is dressing up. There was a lot of museums and just crazy stuff like zip lining, a lot of air activities that I wouldn't do or I wouldn't think that I would ever have the chance to do. I did it there. I started clubbing there, which I was living my best life. Ariana, man, your military career started off like a meteor. I mean, you got to go to Korea. That's one of the greatest places, I think, in the world. Uh, Beautiful people, great food. But basic at Fort Jackson, AIT or Advanced Individual Training at Fort Jackson, and now you're back at Fort Jackson. How do you feel? I feel career-wise, I think it is really good for me. There is This is the home of the 42 Alphas, which are the human resource specialists. A lot of our schools are here. There's a lot of classes that you can take advantage of and move ahead with. As far as partying and fun stuff, this, this ain't it. I feel like this is more of a place that people can retire for. This is more of a family place. I do stay out of trouble, so that's a good thing. I met some of my best NCOs that I know I'd like to take with me throughout my career and even after. They're good mentors for me. I feel like Fort Jackson probably should have been the first duty station I went to so I can learn a little more. When I was in Korea, I really didn't do my job. I worked at the post office. But when I got here, I started doing my job. I work in S1. I do paperwork, trainees paperwork, permanent party paperwork, awards, actions, just anything that has to do with our important documents. Ariana, the expectation of so many people when they see a soldier, me or you or or anyone else that wears the uniform, is that we're all warriors. But the reality is, is that warriors cannot do their jobs without those in the support roles. 42 Alpha or administrative specialists are very important to the Army. Tell us a little bit more about how those caissons keep rolling along. So with my job, I have many tasks. There are people that get in trouble. I have to process that paperwork. People that aren't getting paid or they're getting paid the wrong pay. Nobody wants to do a job if they're not getting paid, especially waking up at the crack of dawn in the morning like we do to go do PT in freezing cold weather. I also do awards people PCS, which means you move duty stations. People have achievement awards. You do something that you're getting recognized for. People have posthumous awards, which are awards that you, you award people that have died in service. I do actions for drill sergeants. I do actions for permanent parties and trainees. Actions such as placement and advancing another year or extending another year at Fort Jackson. Or you might want to go to a different school. I'll help you with that. I can write down you know, school names and everything that you might be interested in. I help my sergeant major with a lot of stuff. A lot of times he might come in and be like, hey, you, you come do this for me. So I'm, also, I'm I'm just getting tasked with a lot of different things. They're all beneficial. I have a lot of different things that I do in my job. I like it. Thanks for joining us in our Soldier Salute, presented by Little Pig's Barbecue. Serving Columbia since 1963 with that bodacious buffet. And by Lexington Guns and Shooting Range. Veteran owned and operated.